So lesson 5.2 is multiplying and dividing radical expressions found on pages 282 to 293 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to expand and demonstrate understanding of radicals with numerical and variable radicands, including computations solving equations limited to square roots and one or two radicals. And our lesson objectives today is to be able to multiply radical expressions together and to be able to divide radical expressions together by rationalizing the denominator. So when you're multiplying radical expressions together, you need to multiply the coefficients together, which are the numbers or variables out in front, and need to multiply the radicands together. And the radicands are the things that are underneath that root sign. And remember to leave your answers in simplified form. So our first one is just a binomial times a binomial. So we use FOIL, four root two times root seven is four root 14. Four root, two, four root two, sorry, times negative five root 14 is gonna be negative 20 root 28. 3 root 7 is what we get next, and then 3 times 5 root 14 is negative 15 root 14. So now we combine like terms where we can. We have 4 root 14 and negative 15 root 14. That gives us negative 11 root 14. And you should be able to see that uh, 28 can be written as 4 times 7. So you could simplify that one. And so we get negative 11 root 14. When we take the square root of 4, that is 2, and we multiply it up by the number out in front, so that's negative 40 root 7 plus 3 root 7. And that means we get negative 11 root 4 and minus 37 root 7. And that is just what you get when you multiply those two binomials together. Our next example is negative 2 root 11c multiplied by 4 root 2c cubed minus 3 root 3. So we'll just multiply this term by both terms on the inside we get negative 8 root 22 c to the fourth power and then we get positive 6 root 33 uh, c and we'll take a look and see if we can actually simplify any of these we can't simplify the root 22 but we can simplify c to the fourth power that is just c squared and so we just get negative 8 c squared root 22 and we can't simplify 33 or c so we just get plus 6 root 33c. In our last example, we have 9 cube root 2w times cube root of 4w plus 7 cube root 28. We'll use the distributive property again. We'll multiply the first term outside the brackets by both terms inside. So we get 9 cube root um, 8w squared plus 63 cube root 56w We'll take the cube root of what we can, um, which is 8, and the cube root of 8 is 2, so we get 18 cube root w squared. We can't take the cube root of w squared. We'll simplify what's inside underneath the radicand in the second case here. 56 is the same as 8 times 7 w. And now we can take the cube root of 8 again. So we get 18 cube root w squared plus the cube root of 8 is 2, so 2 times 63 is 126 cube root 7w. So when you're dividing radical expressions, you need to divide the coefficients, the numbers out in front together, and you divide the radicands. And a simplified expression does not have a radical in the denominator. So you have to remember to leave your answer simplified, but it can't have a radical in the denominator. So here's our first example. It says 6 root 51 divided by 3 root 3. So if you can, your first thing is to just try and divide both uh, the coefficients and the radicands. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. And 51 divided by 3 is 17. So that's as easy as that one gets. You can just straight up divide. In this case, we can't really divide. So we have to keep in mind that a simplified expression does not have a radical in the denominator. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by something um, that will get rid of that denominator. And that is going to be root 6. And we multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing because that's like multiplying by 1, which doesn't, doesn't really change anything. So we get 4 um, times root 8 times root 6, so that's 4 root 48, divided by root 6 divided by root 6, or sorry, root 6 times root 6 is just root 36, and that, and the denominator is just 6, which is why we chose to multiply by root 6. Now over here, we have root 48. If we could simplify that, which we can, I know that 4 will go into that. I know it'll go in 4 times, which means we can also simplify it a little bit more. 4 times 4 times 3. So square root of 4 is 2 and square root of 4 is 2. That's 2 times 2 times whatever is already out in front, which is 4, and that gives us uh, 
2 times 2 times 4 is 16, root 3 over 6. And also to be um, simplified, we have to make sure that the 16 and 6 are in lowest terms as well. So we can divide both those by 2. We get 8 root 3 over 3. And our final example has negative 7 divided by 2 cube root 9p. So instead of trying to find something that's going to make a perfect square, we're going to find something that's going to make a perfect cube. So we're going to multiply by the cube root of 9p and 9p. Because that way we will have three 9p's, which is what we need to be able to take the cube root of. So on the top, we're going to also take the cube root of, that would be 81p squared. So what we get is negative 7 times the cube root of 81p squared, all divided by 2. And cube root of 9p times 9p times 9p is 9p. So we get negative 7 cube root of, now 81 can be broken up into 27 times 3. 27 is a perfect cube. And on the bottom we get 18p. So we get neg negative 7 uh, cube root, oh sorry, we can take the cube root of 27 which is 3 now. And then that's still multiplied by the cube root of 3p squared all over 18p. And we can simplify before multiplying. Sometimes it's easier just to simplify. So I can simplify the 18 and the 3. I know that 3 goes into 3 once and 3 goes into 18 six times. So my final answer is negative 7 cube root 3p squared all over 6p. And again, we're going to check to make sure that we can't simplify anything. Negative 7 and 6 don't simplify. We can't simplify these p's and this p because these p's are under the cube root sign. And so it's actually the cube root of p squared. So we are as simple as it gets. And finally, if you have more than one term in the denominator, you will need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by what we call the conjugate of the denominator. Now the conjugate is um, the same terms, but has the opposite sign between them. So let's take a look here. We have two divided by three root five minus four. So we're gonna multiply by three root five plus four. Now hopefully you recognize, oops, that's a four. Hopefully you recognize these two things as being uh, the same two terms but opposite signs. And if we were to multiply those together, those are acting like a difference of squares when we did our factoring um, stuff. So we've got 2 times 3 root 5 plus 4 on the top. And out here we have 3 root 5 times 3 root 5. Well, that's 9 root 25. We have 3 root 5 times positive 4. That's 12 root 5. And then negative 4 times 3 root 5 is negative 12 root 5. And this will happen every time if we multiply by the conjugate, we'll get the same two terms, but one will be positive, one will be negative, so those will cancel out. Negative four plus four is negative 16. So with these two terms canceling out, now we get an expression that doesn't have a root in the denominator because the square root of 25 is five. So on the top, we'll multiply this in, we get six uh, root five plus eight. And on the bottom, we get nine times root 25, that's just nine times five, that's 45 minus 16. So we get 6 root 5 plus 8 divided by 29. And that's as simple as it gets. So multiplying by the conjugate allows us to get rid of any sort of denominators, any sorry roots in the denominator, because these two terms will always cancel out. And you will always have a perfect square here and you'll have a perfect square there. So in summary, when multiplying radical expressions, you need to multiply the coefficients together and the radicands together. When dividing radical expressions, we need to divide the coefficients and the radicands. And if you have more than one term in the denominator, you need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate, which was the same two uh, terms but opposite signs in between them uh, from the denominator. So your assignment is on pages 289 to 292. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.